Hey everyone, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, I am gonna be covering a brand new product that I am super excited to bring to the market, and that is a bolt-in drive-by-wire pedal for the Classic Mini to accompany our drive-by-wire throttle body already sold on the store. And on today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to install this, why I'm installing it on my car, because as many of you know, I already have a drive-by-wire setup with a relatively functioning pedal, and why you might wanna do this on your car as well. Now when you receive this from us, it will look something like this. We have designed this so that you can independently rotate this arm here to kind of position this and make it a little bit cheaper for you guys when we're shipping it. Now what it comes with is the fully assembled pedal setup here. Now this is a bracket that's going to mount right where your original factory pedal goes. There are two bolts right down here. And then we have a supplementary connection here on the left side, which will connect to an existing hole on your existing body of your Mini. Now this, plus these three bolts, are what stabilize and hold this brand new electronic pedal. So we have a little set screw here to help set where you want your pedal to go. And it'll look something like this when it's installed. Now drive-by-wire pedal is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It completely eliminates any physical metal cable. You know, you guys probably are very familiar with your minis. You have a little cable throttle that notches into your pedal and then that connects directly to your carburetor. This pedal is to allow you to easily swap over to drive-by-wire when you pair it with a drive-by-wire compatible ECU as well as a drive-by-wire throttle body. Now. One of the things that I have been working really hard on doing is providing a drive-by-wire setup that you guys can install on your cars and make it as easy as possible. This accompanies our existing drive-by-wire throttle body. That is to allow you to easily convert to a drive-by-wire setup. And now that I have started talking to you guys about this, I'm pretty sure I have said drive-by-wire at least 45 million times. But our kits are going to come with a D-pinned connector. This is to allow you to wire it into your new ECU. The bolts and mounting hardware for the L-bracket off to the side here. And then you're gonna use your factory mounting holes and mounting bolts for those bottom two. This would then get calibrated and set up in your ECU, in your software to allow you to finalize and set up the drive-by-wire setup. Now I'm sure many of you are thinking, well, Cole, why would you wanna add a whole bunch of electronic stuff into an old classic mini, which is you know, largely reliable with a carburetor? Well, as these cars age, things for those carburetors and parts for those types of fuel setups are starting to get harder and harder to find. So my goal is to keep minis running well into the future, and that involves modernizing some of the fuel delivery systems as well as some of the equipment that is used to run these original A-series engines. Now, if you guys haven't seen my previous videos, I did recently wrap up a resto mod build on my mini, which finished up the installation of a turbo, a drive-by-wire setup, and a full electrical revamp using a Haltech Nexus R3. If you guys haven't seen that, I would definitely recommend going back and watching that, but I do want to talk about this just a minute. I get this question a ton on my website where I'm selling these products, and people are asking, do you sell a complete kit, or what's the ECU I should use? Well, first things first, I don't sell a complete kit just yet. I don't have a full set of parts that I feel comfortable bundling and making a kit just yet. That might change in the future, but for right now, I am selling independent DIY parts to allow you to build out your fuel-injected setup. And then, of course, the other question I get really frequently is what ECU should I use in order to convert my system to fuel injection or even drive-by-wire? Because we do offer both a cable setup, a cable throttle setup, so you can use your original accelerator pedal or a drive-by-wire setup. 
Well, the short answer to that is my recommendation is any ECU that allows you the functions you need. Now for a classic mini using a regular naturally aspirated engine, you really don't need a crazy ECU. And the question really boils down to how complex is the system that you're setting up? So if you're gonna go with a cable throttle setup using a standard cable throttle, using your original accelerator pedal, and you just wanna to convert to fuel injection, you can usually get away with something simple like a Speedwino or a Haltech Elite 750 or any number of other kind of baseline uh, entry-level ECUs. It's a four-cylinder engine. There's not a lot of complexity to it. The biggest thing is that you need to make sure that your ECU can handle the Siamese port engine setup and the fueling system and fueling requirements of that. Now, if you wanna go drive by wire, it does get a little more complicated and you do need a little bit more sophisticated ECU. This feature is something that is starting to become more common across all ECU manufacturers, so it is getting a little bit easier to get, but for the Haltech setups, the Elite 1500 is the sweet spot for um, complexity, but also simplicity in terms of the things you may or may not need. Um, it does provide you the ability to run a full turbocharged setup with drive-by wire pretty easily. Again, you can set up something with Speedwino, very, very cool DIY setups if you wanna kind of piece together the parts that you need. It's a great way to save money and kind of set yourself up for success. Um, alternatively, you can use something like ECU Master, um, Link ECU. These are all options that you can kind of dive into and look into yourself. Um, previously, you might have seen companies like Specialist Components using Delta ECUs. Um, these ECUs that they use in their kits are really, really kind of long in the tooth. Um, they were great when they initially got set up. However, they haven't seen a lot of updates in the Specialist Components kits and Delta ECUs as a whole has started moving kind of away from independent people purchasing these ECUs and has shifted more to kind of OEM replacement parts and working with OEM specifically to build out ECUs. So in my opinion, I probably wouldn't go with an SCS ECU. They're great ECUs, just not for this type of application anymore, um, given that their support model is gonna be kind of shifting away from that in the future. So. As you guys know, this build and my channel is sponsored by Haltech. So I do obviously have a Haltech ECU on my setup, which is what I'm gonna be showing you guys this install with. But again, this is not prescriptive. You guys can use whatever ECU supports the functions you need. Now the pedal that we have in the car right now is a DSN pedal that I have retrofitted to essentially be a drive-by-wire pedal. And I do have a full sub-stack post that I show in depth how I converted that. Um, I definitely would recommend you guys go check out my Substack. Um, I post kind of long form articles and things that don't really make it to the channel on my Substack. Now, unfortunately, the pedal sensor that I used was a Honda Acura part, which is totally fine, but it is extremely sensitive and it's causing a little bit of feedback issues with my ECU and the sensor itself tends to bounce a little bit. So with that bouncing signal, the ECU gets a little frustrated and doesn't exactly behave properly. So I wanted to work with my folks who build these excellent EFI parts that I carry, the Classic Mini DIY branded parts, and I wanted to come up with a solution for you guys. So that's where this bolt-in pedal comes in. This is a really high tension OEM spring and a reliable and easily serviceable uh, pedal sensor right here. It has redundancy as well as all of the functions you would need for drive-by wire. With this setup, I'm hoping that I can eliminate all of that kind of bouncy throttle behavior and make my ECU a little bit happier, which will in turn make tuning the car much, much easier and much more streamlined. So first things first, let's jump into the car. I'm gonna show you guys what's there already and we'll pull that out and then we'll install our new pedal. Now looking at this again, you guys can see I have my DSN pedal covers for my factory uh, pedal box, that's the clutch and the brake. And then we have our DSN accelerator here. Now this is the full accelerator pedal, so you can see the kind of slotted uh, accelerator pedal. And then up at the top, you can see that there is a small rose joint, which is connected to an arm, which is then connected to my pedal sensor. You can see here how that works. Now I, I've added an additional spring here to make that tension stronger, but unfortunately, this is what is allowing the pedal to behave really funny. 
this kind of jittering is happening kind of more exaggerated as I'm driving down the road. And the sensor itself is picking up vibrations in the car. The Classic Mini is old, of course, and unfortunately does vibrate quite a bit. And it simply is just not gonna be a good application for my setup. Now, that's not to say that you guys might not find this and set it up and it works just fine. But for my purposes, we are going to have to remove this. So this is my pedal sensor connector. We're gonna to have to disconnect this, depin it, and we're gonna put our new connector on this. For those of you who are doing this on a brand new setup, you will refer to the wiring guide. It requires two five volt feeds, two sensor ground feeds, and then two sensor outputs that go to your ECU. This will vary based on the ECU that you use, but that's the general gist of how it works. Now, first things first, I think what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna do my best to show you guys this. We'll take this rose joint off, get that fully disconnected, and then we should be able to get the pedal out more easily. All right, so it was a little bit harder than I'd hoped in order to show you guys this, but this is the DSN pedal. It mounts, obviously, like I just said, down on those two bolts, and this has been removed. You can see the rose joint is disconnected. Now the new setup is going to use these same two factory bolts on the bottom here, but we're also gonna be using this hole right up here at the top. Now that hole, if you're lucky, may already be threaded, if it isn't, or perhaps it's really rusty, maybe you have an older car like I do. I have a 1960 shell, and as a result, that hole is pretty rusty. So we're gonna try threading it and going ahead and screwing it in, but there is a possibility that depending on the age of your car, this won't thread in really happy. Now, just like with the removal of the old one, the new one is going to be a little hard for me to show you guys, but this is approximately how that gets mounted in just like so. And then you have your L bracket, which comes off the side of the pedal here to allow you to bolt that to that upper hole that is right over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and install this, but then I'm gonna show you guys the bolts I use to install this and how it looks when it's finished. Essentially, we still need to repin our connector here, which we'll do here in just a minute. But if we stick this out of the way, you can see we have our brand new bolt-in pedal. We have our two bolts at the bottom end. Those were connected in. We tightened the Allen key on this arm here, which will position this at the perfect height with the other pedals. One thing that I am exploring doing in the future is expanding this lineup to allow you to bolt on a DSN pedal. I'm probably going to drill and tap this one so that it matches, but I think that it would be really cool if we could carry something like that. Then we have the positioning bolt, which is up at the top left of this bracket here. I showed you guys that while it was still on the bench. That gets bolted into the box that holds the pedal box in place. Now on a Mark I, those holes are a little bit differently positioned, but our kit will accommodate for both the early style shells as well as the later ones. But you can see here, we have a perfectly functioning pedal, and depending on how much carpet you have, you'll have a different throw. This can go quite far, um, and this pedal down here can be positioned a little bit so that it's just the right spot for you. Now, we're gonna pin this in, and then I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in the software so you can see the pedal actually being actuated in the software and being read. Also, you'll notice that I left the pedal sensor up here for the other set that I built and created here. Um, the reason I left this in here is because it requires the whole pedal box to come out. The bolts are on top, and honestly, I don't want to take all of that out just to remove this little sensor, especially when you can't see it from looking down from driving position. Anyways, I am going to trim this wire here. I'm going to repin this, and then we'll plug it in, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, and so you have the last look here. We've got our pedal connector fully pinned in and wired in. Um, this wiring diagram, as I mentioned, will come with the kit. So when you get this set up, you'll have that full pin connector um, with all of the individual pins so you can wire it to your ECU's wiring um, and know where everything needs to go. And of course, the pedal still works great. One thing I would recommend is when you receive this pedal from us, just go ahead and add a little bit of lubricant to the spring. They do tend to creak just a little bit when they're unlubricated, but once you get some lube on there, nice and silent. Now, as we press that pedal, we are now beginning to get a reading on the ECU. So you can see here, got my computer set up, 
and I'm gonna go ahead and press the pedal and you guys can see the throttle position. So there we go, all the way up, all the way back down, pedal, 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 very responsive, all the way up to flooring it. Now, what's cool about this is you can also see the drive-by-wire TPS that is the throttle position that the drive-by-wire is opening and closing. Now I would show that to you guys, but I have all of that kind of piped in and hidden. There's not a good way to show you the opening and closing of the throttle, but you, I can hear the motor actuating and you can also see the TPS. So when we have the pedal pressed at 27, the throttle is open about 15%, 50% is 43, 69, 70, 73. So as you can see, the actual throttle opening isn't linear with the pedal. So if we go to 20% on the pedal, we're still only open about 11% on the throttle. The reason we do that is it lets you smooth out the opening and closing of your throttle. It makes driving the car much more comfortable. All right, and that's gonna wrap this up. It really is that simple. It's just three bolts and you have a drive-by-wire pedal fully installed and ready for wiring to your ECU and your setup for fuel injection. Now, my goal with this, as I mentioned before, is to make this as easy as possible. Of course, switching to fuel injection has its challenges and its learning curves, but my hope is that with some of these reasonably priced options for you to simply add a pedal, simply switch out your carburetor for a drive-by-wire setup, add a trigger position sensor onto your crank pulley. All of these things are made to really make this barrier of entry into fuel injection much lower so that all you really have to worry about is the ECU and the tune and finding somebody to help you map your car. But even in that respect, I have base maps on my website to help you guys with that part. So from my perspective, there really hasn't been a better opportunity and a better time to swap to fuel injection, whether you are going full turbocharged madness like I did on this car, or perhaps you just wanna keep your car naturally aspirated and get a little bit more reliability out of your fueling system. So if you guys have any questions about the drive-by-wire setup, how this works, anything that you might need for this kit, that you might need for a fuel injection conversion, post those comments in the comment section below. I really wanna help you guys out with this and help you guys start your fuel injection journey. So until I see you guys on the next one, and until we get some driving videos of Bad Wolf, you know the drill. Enjoy those minis and motor on. See you guys.